And good morning, welcome back to another video here in the off-grid garage, which is still on-grid. <laughs> Look at this, we've got beautiful sunshine outside, 35 degrees Celsius, 10 a.m. in the morning. Welcome to sunny, hot Australia. In today's video, I want to talk about how I charge my lithium iron phosphate batteries at the moment. And I need to stress about this. I haven't got all the equipment delivered yet. So I'm using some work around some hacks. But you know, when you open these boxes and unpack these beautiful battery cells here, you definitely want to start charging them as well, you know. And if you have already solar on your roof or if you use an and grid charging system it doesn't matter these babies need to be charged a little bit at least you want to start you know you want to you want to push in some electrons in these battery cells but the delivery has not arrived on the day i was expecting it so i have big hopes for monday now because now it's weekend and then hopefully we will get another eight of these battery cells to complete our 16s battery system 48 volt 15 16 kilowatt hours at the moment i've got all the batteries in parallel to balance them because there are two different deliveries this one came with the airplane i should write this down somewhere airplane delivery and this one came with a container ship Hi hyundai vancouver and and the the other eight which are coming are from the as Calotta. I need to mention that, right? So as I said, at the moment I've got them all in parallel. So I've got all the positive terminals here connected for this battery bank. And I've got all the positive terminals connected to this battery bank. And then you can see this white lead connects this positive bus bar with the positive bus bar of this battery bank. And the same with the negatives. We've got our negative bus bar here and then the other negative bus bar. Well, it's the same bus bar, it has, just has some heat shrink. And then we've got this green yellow connection here from the negative bus bar to the other negative bus bar. So this is all set up and you can leave this as it is for a while to balance all the battery cells. Well, and this is exactly how we start today. This is already one of the charging methods you can use, you know. This was my first battery delivery here and this one had a higher state of charge than the other one. So I put them together in parallel now with these jumper leads here and they're balanced for over a week. And they are still about 100, 150 milliamps flowing from this battery bank into this battery bank here. Well, we've got 280 ampere hours of each battery here. So this is 11, 1120 ampere hours just for one battery bank. And then we've got another 1120 ampere hours for this battery bank. This is more than 2200 ampere hours in a total. That is so crazy, right? That is so crazy. You're really used to it from these 18650 cells here, you know. They've got like two or three ampere hours. And now we are talking about thousands of ampere hours. It still blows my mind, really. It still blows my mind how much energy fits in these boxes here. Amazing. And the next setup I'll show you is the correct way to charge these batteries, actually. So what you need for that is a benchtop power supply where you can actually set the output voltage. Yeah, this one I built in the 80s here when I did my apprenticeship. And it's still working, great. But you can usually buy them online from Amazon, eBay or AliExpress for about 50 to $100. So adjustable voltage, adjustable current. And this one is already lots of years old and it can handle only 2 amps maximum. But this is fine for the purpose of demonstration what I want to show you. So what you want to do is you want to set the output voltage to not more than 3.6, 3.65 volts. And this is the maximum voltage these cells should be charged to. So if you have different cells, please check the specifications of your cells and see what the maximum voltage is you can charge these cells with. So don't trust these displays here on these power supplies. They may be off 3.62. That is perfect. That's the perfect voltage. Okay, this has been set. If you're charging one or multiple of these battery cells, you can crank up your amps to the maximum. So I set mine to maximum two amps at the moment. This is all this one can do. Well, and then you connect your power supply to your batteries, right? Um, I think I haven't got long enough leads for that. Okay, I, at the moment I don't wanna I don't want to move these batteries closer to the power supply here, so I need some to put some cables together to actually charge from there to there. Okay. 
Okay, and then of course you connect your negative terminal with a wire, don't forget the loop, to the negative terminal of your battery. And you do the same with the positive wire. I, I just, this is just for demonstration purposes. I would, I would not recommend teaching and coaching purposes, right? And we extend this here with this cable, jumping over there and connecting straight to the positive via a circuit breaker to the positive terminal of the battery. Should you have a circuit breaker or any kind of safety equipment in between? I think yes, you always should, you always should. As we said, these are 2240 ampere hours, only 3.2 volts, but so many amps. You know, if you do something wrong here, if you do a short, if these cables would connect, you know. And then again, we should verify our voltage on the negative terminal coming from the power supply and the positive coming from the power supply, 3.62 volts. So this is the maximum coming from the power supply into our battery. It cannot get more. With this method, you cannot overcharge your battery. It will stay within the 3.63, is it now? Okay, 3.63 volt now. You can never overcharge your battery with that. So this is the safest and easiest way to charge your battery. Okay, now we are turning on our circuit breaker and we are checking our power supply here, our workbench power supply, and it shows us 0.8 amps coming from the power supply into the battery. Uh, let us check the amps here again. So this confirms we are charging with 0 0.8 amps only. Another safety check here. Red is positive, black is negative, and we are measuring the voltage 3.33 we have. And we do the same on this bank here, which should be almost the same. Yeah, 3.33. So this is a well-balanced pack now. And you can see the difference is only 3.6 volt from what we are charging from the power supply to 3.3 volt. So the voltage difference is so small, it pushes only 0.8 amps on it. If the batteries would be empty, it will pull the full two amps from the power supply. But even then, considering we've got 2000 ampere hours, 2200 ampere hours, and you charge this battery with two amps only, this would mean, so this means you are adding two ampere hours each hour you are charging. So, and if you do the calculation, if these batteries would be empty and you charge with two amps, that would be like uh, 1100 hours, which is like a lot of days. <laughs> so it will take a long, long, long day to charge with this small power supply, this big battery. But you know, if you are a beginner with all this, stay on the safe side and take your time. Don't rush into things. Let the power supply do whatever it needs to do. Let the batteries charge slowly and everything will be good after 60 days. <laughs> It's actually 46 days. <laughs> so after 47 days, your battery would be fully charged. <laughs> but again, this is the safest method you can do because the power supply will keep the voltage of 3.6, whatever volt we set it to, and does not overcharge your battery. It will just stop. If the voltage of the batteries is coming up and is exactly the same as the one from the power supply, there will be no voltage difference and therefore there will be no current going into the battery anymore. And this is when the battery shuts down to zero amps, 0, 0.0 amps, you know? Okay, so how do you increase now or how do you decrease the charging time now? Ah, making a video, are you going to? No sense for my creativity. And with this adjustable power supply, we can actually simulate that the battery gets full. If we just lower the voltage here, we lower the voltage difference between the power supply and the batteries. And if we do that, you can see the current goes down quickly to zero at 3.4 volts. So this voltmeter here is 30 years old and has never been calibrated again afterwards, after I built this one. So, and of course, to increase your charging speed, you can do the following. You can just increase the voltage, right? 
there you go. I now set the power supply to 4 volts and we max out the count with 2 amps what the power supply can supply. And let's check our voltage here again on the battery directly. So positive, negative, and we still have 3.33 volts here. So how does it come that the power supply shows us 4 volt, 4 volts, but the battery is still on 3.3. Yes, we will have some losses here on the cable, but this is not the reason. The reason for that is the internal resistance of this battery bank we put together here. It is so low, it is like a short for the power supply here. And because we've got so and because we've got such a large energy sink here basically, yeah, this absorbs so much energy and this delivers so little energy. And by the way, this is not recommended if you are a beginner in these things because this could potentially damage your battery, you could overcharge your battery, you could start a fire or you could even Yeah, you don't want that. I just unplugged the negative terminal here and I set the power supply to its maximum voltage of 28.7 volts and 2 amps maximum and now we are reconnecting the negative terminal. And you can see the ampere meter goes to 2 amps, this is the maximum, and the voltage drops from 30 volts to 3.9 only. And let's measure again here on the battery and we can see still 3.33 volts. So this does not change. The internal resistance of these cells is super, super low and this one absorbs all the energy. That's why we can charge here with 30 volts and we will not have a problem with that. But of course, the power supply will now keep pushing for 30 volts. It is trying to lift the voltage of the battery from 3.3 to 30 volts, which would totally destroy it. And that's why I said, if you're a beginner, don't do that. Don't push your power supply that high. You will get more amps, a shorter charging time, but you need to monitor your battery cells all the time, unless you have them correctly connected to a BMS, which we haven't. We work with raw cells here, no protection gear at all, apart from an AC circuit breaker, which is totally fine, by the way. Yeah, and again, the voltage difference now is from 20, from 29 volts to 3.3 volts. So the power supply tries to push the maximum current it can do into the battery and charges it the fastest way. So if your power supply can deliver like 5 amps, 10 amps, some of them can even deliver 20 or 30 amps, you can just increase... You can just increase the voltage of your power supply until you reach the maximum current and this charges your battery the fastest way. The more amps, the faster the battery will charge. But you need to monitor, you need to observe the battery voltage all the time. So be very careful what you're doing. You can, you know what will happen. So if we can charge this 3.3 volt battery with 30 volts from a power supply, could we potentially use a solar panel which delivers around 30 to 40 volts as well? And we know solar panels have a restricted and maximum current as well, exactly like the power supply. Well, let's give it a try. As you know, I've got my terminals here set up in the off-grid garage. Um, three solar panels on top of the roof. This is a 40 watt solar panel. There's another 40 watt, 220 watt solar panel. And we've got always the red as the positive and the black as the negative terminal for each solar panel individually. And when I connect our meter here and turn this one on, we can see we've got 31 volts. Uh, it's a little bit on the solar panel without any load. And now I want to show you the maximum short current of this solar panel as well. So we connect the positive and the negative terminal together just in a loop and measure and measure the current going through that so this is a short between positive and negative terminal directly on the solar panel so i turn this on and we have 8.47 amps this is the maximum current we get in a short from this solar panel okay we turn this off again and now again i've connected the positive terminal of the solar panel with the positive terminal of my battery via a 
circuit breaker and the negative terminal here goes through this wire into the negative terminal of my battery. So I'll turn on the solar panel here, which doesn't do anything because we still have the circuit breaker off and bang, nothing happens. No short, nothing smokes, nothing. All right, let's measure the current coming from the solar panel. And we can see we've got 8.35 volts. This is almost the same current as we just had before when we shorted the solar panel. So, and this is exactly what happens with the um, power supply I said before. The power supply sees the battery as a short. The, the internal resistance is so low, it delivers maximum current as much as it can. And the power supply was limited to 2 amps and the solar panel is limited to 8.5 amps. Actually, this is exactly the same type of solar panel I have on the roof. And we can have just have a quick look at the short circuit current 8.09 amps, it says on the label. So 8.1 amps and we are getting 8.3 amps and we are charging again with 31 volts directly from the solar panel. No other electronic in between. Here again, negative and positive and we measure nothing because I've forgotten to put this on DC. Okay, again, negative, positive. And you wonder why it measures 3.3 volts. So we turn this one off again here and we take one of the other solar panels. These are only 22 volts and have a short current of 2.2 amps. So put this in the other solar panel and turn it on. And we measure again here our current, yep, 2.2 volts this is the maximum the solar panel can deliver at 22 volts and this is what goes into our battery at the moment maximum current the power supply can deliver you know it doesn't matter if it's a solar panel or a power supply from your grid it doesn't matter it's the same function it sees this one as a big 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 load very low internal resistance and heaps of storage so it it's it soaks in all the amps until it reaches maximum saturation. And here again, we are measuring negative, positive of the battery. And surprise, surprise, 3.3 volts. So obviously, regardless what kind of power supply we connect to these batteries, they always show 3.3 volts, but eventually the voltage will rise once the batteries are charging up. And this is then when we need to monitor we need to disconnect the charging process of course otherwise we will damage the battery we will start a fire or i know i know i, I don't do it anymore so these are all unsafe methods to charge a battery because you don't have control how many amps are going into the battery how the voltage is and nothing will disconnect the battery automatically once it reaches its maximum voltage so not recommended for beginners Okay, let's do something beginner friendly.